Next item is 2021 um, second budget revision and 2021-2022 budget. Good evening, President Thorpe, members of the board, and Dr. Maleko. As we do every time in June, we start talking about the budget again. Actually, well before this, but this is where we get close to the deadline. And unfortunately, the state does not have their budget adopted yet, but there's a lot of good information out there, and we'll kind of go through it here quickly. As soon as I put up the screen for you. There we go. So as we go through this every year, um, the, you know, I just have the mission statement there just so as for people online you can always see what it is. Our budget is growing um, with the inclusion of a lot of the federal money this last year, and we're going to have a lot more federal money going forward due to the ESSER funds that our budget is obviously going to grow. And with that, there's a lot of decisions we have to make at the district level. Uh, we've had, we're adding a new school next year, the uh, virtual K-12 school, which is coming online. You'll actually see that our staffing numbers are lower just because, you know, with being online this last year, our numbers are lower. And a lot of people had to stay at home and take care of their children. So we've been working on a much reducer staff this last year, which has added to our available funds to actually give us more funds to go forward. But overall, you know, our percentages are still about the same for our free and reduced lunch, our ELL program, and our special education. And feel free to stop me any along the way if you have a question. Otherwise, I'll just keep going because I know the budget you could take hours talking about. So some of us no, like to do that, but others talking. may not. So I will be <laughs> cognizant of your time. And you can always contact me later if you have more questions. But I always like presenting this slide because even though we have a lot of money, a lot of it is dedicated to purposes that we can touch for certain things and other things we cannot. So here you kind of see the summary of budgets where we have on the far right capital projects. That's where we have our building and site fund, which we fund from general fund and from our enhancement millage. And when we actually pass a bond issue, you'll see that in that column also. Next one is the debt funds where we actually have where we previously have passed bond issues in the past or we have refunded bonds. You'll see that in that money. And that's restricted money. We can't use it for anything else besides that. Our special revenue fund. So anytime we have money coming in the district for a specific purpose, it has to be in the special revenue fund. So you'll see our funded projects where we have a lot of grants like Title I, Title II, Title III, Title IV, Title V. It goes on. We have our IDA, which is our special ed funds. And new this year, we have our federal grants for the COVID-19 and ESSER grants. And that's where a lot of money is coming in now because of the recent pandemic we've been in. And we also have a new one called GASB 84, where GASB 84 looked at the student activity funds, and we had to kind of reassign or reassess how we spend those. And some of those moved to a special revenue, and some, very few of them remained in the agency funds for student activities like we have in the past. So that's a new one from there. Anything not covered in those special funds Everything else falls into our general fund, which is our main operational budget. So that's kind of what this says. So a lot of time what we spend on is making sure we're spending appropriately the funds that we are given by our community and from the state and federal agencies that we spend them correctly and properly expense them in the correct funds. So there's a lot of time spent on that. So significant changes for our current year. Uh, if you remember, this time last year, it was a lot of doom and gloom because they were looking at prorating us $650 per pupil because of the pandemic was recently new. They weren't know how it was going to impact things. And we were looking at a $13 million reduction in our operational budget. Now, they said, well, we're not going to give you our state aid package right away. They waited till August and had another revenue consensus meeting. And they found out that the state was doing much better because people were spending still on items. So our sales tax revenue, which we get a portion, comes to us and also the income tax, that people were still coming money coming into, the, into their pockets. And so they were still spending things, so the income tax was also much higher. So it turned around that they did not prorate us that and actually gave us a little bit of money through 11D of $66 per pupil to, instead of taking away the $13 million. So it was a 180 switch, and, which was good because then we can actually run a program that was much more robust than what we were looking at before. There's some other special money on MIPSERS. They also did a super blend because they knew a lot of kids were not going to go to school 
or and and that was a whole other process that the instructional side took on. They did a super blend because they figured they didn't want to show the big loss in students because that impacts our revenue. Is so we get a, a money per pupil for every student that we have from the state funding. So they gave a super blend. They looked at the prior year, blended it with our current year, and that saved us about one point four million dollars we would have lost in revenue. So they did that super blend. And so as we look forward. Just looking at the state, you'll see on the far right side, the blue section, that's sales tax. So 46% of our money comes from the 2% of the 6% the state charges on every sales tax item. The other, on the other side, the lighter blue is the income tax. So between those two, a lot of our money comes from that. And as, as they saw through the pandemic, that we did not see that big of a reduction. So therefore, our revenues didn't have to get prorated. And we were much better off this year. So I just kind of give you a picture of where the money comes from the state. And as everybody asks, lottery, yes, all the money from lottery goes into it, but only makes 7% of our total funds available to the state for schools. Very important, but again, it's not a big portion. It's the sales tax and income tax are the two biggest ones. So just looking at the current economy, this came from the state during the revenue consensus. As you can see, in 2021, that last column on the right, the blue bar, was up, you know, 56 percent higher or a million more than what or billion what they reported the, than what they expected. So that's why we were allowed to actually have a more robust state aid this current year. And you can see the graph where it went down real quick for the pandemic, but it quickly shot back up. Same thing for income tax growth. You can see in 2020 actual was 3.6 percent, but projection for 21 and was up much higher. So there's a lot of money in the state aid budget for future funding for schools. And that's just the revenue estimates that I won't really go into, but just some data there. Same thing with uh, baseline growth before tax changes. You, again, you see the red was much higher than what they expected. So I put this slide in here. This is what they, they projected last May, this current month of May that we just passed, of what they thought the revenues were going to be. The important thing, the graph on the bottom, shows how much money they estimated different from last January. So you're talking anywhere from $1.8 billion to $2 billion more than they thought we were to get in January of 2021. So you can see in, even in January, they were very, still very conservative on what the revenue was going to be. But now, and that's what we saw in our state aid packages as we went through the process of what the governor was going to think, the Senate, the, the House was going to give us. But now they have anywhere from $1.8 to $2 billion more in the school aid fund than what they thought before. So now that they're back talking at the table to figure out how to handle that money. So we were looking anywhere from like 50 to 120 for revenue increases to schools. Now they're talking well over $100 or more that they could give us. But again, we don't control that process. 80% of our revenue comes from the state, so we have to wait for what the state decides on what they're going to do on the revenue for schools going forward. But it looks very promising that our revenue will be even higher than what we're estimating in the budget because we worked on the January numbers to how we developed the budget. So I expect as we go forward, the numbers will get better, not worse from here. So when we look at the three big items that we always talk about is our taxable values, our foundation allowance, and student count. Those are the big three that really make up a big portion of our revenue. So taxable values did increase 1.8%, which is under CPI, so we have no rollback of taxes on our the, the heavily impact that if our growth in taxes exceed the cost of inflation, we will have to roll back some of our taxes, unless we do a headly override. And we don't have to worry about that. Our foundation allowance was flat this year, outside of that the categorical they gave us. But for next year, we're estimating at $80 as a conservative amount right now for what we're looking at in additional revenue. Now, the student count, they have not stated yet if they're going to do another super blend like they did this current year. So we're not aware if that's going to happen yet. Uh, the one the governor recommended, but the other two did not. So therefore, we don't know if that's going to happen or not. And, we're, and even progressing, we're looking at a 500 student, a little over 500 student dollar decrease or student count decrease this year, just on our normal of looking at the the births and our current enrollment. But you know that. So you're looking at a total of a potentially of a 600. And 68 reduction in student counts from last year to this year if they don't do the super blend. So that's a big number for us. So we have to be careful and be kind of set of what's that going to happen going forward. Looking at staffing, uh, we're in our fourth of our fifth year with most of our unions. 
And on the fourth and fifth year, we look at the increase in our foundational allowance for what percentage we give to all the union groups. So right now on the $80, you're looking at a 0.9% increase in our staffing costs based on the union contracts. And we kind of the exempts follow the union contracts in that, in that percentage. And we are looking at a full program next year. So going back to you know, in-person, full-time, along with our new K-12 virtual school. And our infrastructure, we, with the ESSER funds, we'll get a little more into that a lot of our current operational costs we're able to move into ESSER which is rare for federal programs, but we're able to do that, which freed up some money in our general fund so we can start working on some of our infrastructures as we continue to work on our long-term capital plan through with the community. So as part of any budget hearing, you have to look at your tax rate that you're going to levy as a public institution. And we are on the top four items on that chart. So we levy the 6.17 mills on our homes, our not our homestead property. That's our hold harmless millage. We have the 18 mills that we have to levy as part of our school aid formula. If we don't levy those full 18 mills, then we get less money per pupil. The state assumes you're going to levy it, and that's how they calculate how much we get per pupil. So anything less than that is a direct withdrawal from our budget. And the next two are the debt millage. So we are continuing at the 3.5 mills. That's what we're doing currently this year and we'll continue at the 3.5 mills for next year. And also, since we do one tax request for both us and the college, the college information is below there. But I'm sure you'll hear that at the budget hearing as part of their process. But we are, and again, the first red section in circles, if we actually had a Headley rollback, you would see that number be 0.9 something. So therefore, we would actually have to roll back our millage that we would levy by that percentage. And just looking at A and B on the far right-hand side, just be aware that, you know, for the homestead, our hold harmless, and our operational millage of 18 mills, they expire in June of 24. So we just have to be aware that at some point we're going to have to go back to the, our community and ask for a renewal of that millage. Mr. Wall? Yes. Can you remind me, for the hold harmless, is it usually a five- or six-year uh, I, I believe we did a 10-year renewal. It's 10? Okay. Yeah. Uh, David is here. I think he was here. I think it's a 10-year renewal. It's 10 by law. Because when I came yeah. here, I said, yay, no millage. You have to <laughs> right when I first walked in the door. Thank you. Yes. The, I can't see these numbers. The one uh, debt, no two, that's set to expire next year? Correct. But then the 13-14 uh, bonds, that money then will jump up. So it will continue to probably most likely 3.5 next year. For 22 23 and then it will drop again after that thank you thank you for asking questions all right just giving you a pictorial of our foundation allowance from the history you can see it went up really high then back in 2012 13 when we had that recession we lost a lot of ground of 470 dollars and it slowly has been ticking up since then so it's just a pictorial of showing you the history of our foundation allowance <laughs> So now we are actually at an all-time high for our foundation allowance as we go forward from here. And for, hopefully, we'll never see another reduction of that size going forward. Moving forward for this slide, could we just do like the past 10 years and forget yes. about that 2012, please? Yes. Thank you. History is important, though. <laughs> One thing, though, that that, 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 that does was a show good year. <laughs> is if we look back to where we had been before and adjusted for inflation... Have we really gotten to an all-time high, or are we still behind where we well, we're still behind. would have been? You, yeah. you know, from your financial background, we're still below where we would have been if we, right. if we, yeah, with inflation. Good. I don't usually get that kind of a question. That was good. All right. Just looking at again, one of our big items is our student count. Um, again, you know, with the super blend for the current year is twenty thousand five eighty is what our funding was based on. But again, go looking at our reduction of our 500 students and potentially the super blend. You know, we're down to 20,087 for our student count for next year. So it is a reduction. So the blend last year worked to our advantage. Correct. Yeah. It was about 1.4 million more. Exactly. But again, they haven't talked about continuing the super blend, so we have to budget going back to what we normally would have. You know, what our normal actual. You said that would cost us how much? I'm sorry. Um, I guess later in the presentation, it's okay. about 4.5 okay. million that we have to reduce for student costs. Uh, um, Mr. Wall, does, yes. this, does this include the, the virtual school? Correct, it does, yeah. yes. Because 
because right now those students are currently in the current style. So another school doesn't change the total numbers that we're looking at here. Just moves where they're at. Not, now we, not we don't, you know, we don't necessarily account for additional students coming in for just our virtual school that we might grab from other school districts in Dearborn. Because we are a closed district, we only allow students that are actually part of our staffing are allowed to come here. Otherwise, we they have to live in Dearborn to attend our school. There are some of our residents that uh, send their schools to private school that might consider that. I Correct. We're reaching out to them. Correct. Yep. Mr. Bashir's <laughs> office does a great job yeah. on that whole yeah, area. Thank you. So this is looking at, I know this is small numbers, but this is looking at our overall plan of where we look at. So if you look at the top, it's just a historical of our fund balance, so you can see historically how we have done. And that was one of the main goals when I first came here, is adding to our fund balance to get us more back to one, to get out of borrowing annually, because our state aid actually comes from October through August. So we're always in a state cash flow issue, so we were able to avoid that. And to give us our better credit rating, you know, because every time we go out for a bond for borrowing or for any purpose, we get a credit rating assigned to how healthy financially we are. And we usually try to get between 15 and 20 percent is what the state organizations usually look at us to have to have a standard fund balance for our type of entity. Now, looking at the this year, um, we're looking at roughly a two point four million dollar surplus. But as we run closer to the end of the year, we'll most likely have additional money because we don't spend it all, and some of it carries over to next year. So we're looking at roughly about a $7.4 million surplus this year. So that will add to our fund balance, as you will see in the audit that usually gets done in September and gets reported out in October. And then looking forward, you expect we run the same program we have, but then we modify it as part of our budget process. So that $7.4 million will carry forward but if you can see that student loss of 505 students is roughly about $4.5 million we're going to lose on our state aid formula because we're going to have less kids that we're going to get per people. We have money in there for the enhancement millage, but again, we don't combine the general fund because that's separately handled, but it is combined with the general fund. But health insurance is going up 3.3%. That is what the fixed cost is. Our salary cost, based on the 0.9, will be about a $1.1 million increase to the budget. Uh, the step increases is $5.6 million. So as a teacher moves up a scale, not just the teachers, but all the unions, if they're union scale, we usually we have a range that they move up. That will move up to roughly about $5.6 million. Uh, we estimate about 50 retirements. Most of those will probably happen late in the year because most of them will work this summer, hopefully, before you know that, so we expect 50. And we range anywhere from 50 to 70 every year because of our large staffing, so that's not uncommon. We're estimating the $80 increase, so that'll bring in 1.5 million. And we have a bunch of miscellaneous items of roughly about a million dollars, so we're looking at a budget surplus of roughly about 400,000 for next year. And that will give us roughly about a 17.69% fund balance at the end of next year. Now, unfortunately, this time of year, since the state runs from October through September, they're not always in a rush to give us their numbers. So we're always doing our budget this time of year on estimates. It's just what it is. But I want to make sure people know what the estimates we're using so they can understand as things change, they can at least know what we base it upon. And it's conservative that it'll probably get better from here. Mr. Wall, two quick items. First, following up on what you just said, and this is a general comment that if any state legislators are hearing right now, great. It is so stupid that we run on a yeah. different calendar than the state of Michigan and that we've got to guesstimate what's going to happen until they figure right. things out. So that's my editorial. Mm -hmm. The second thing is when we look over here and we see the, uh, our fund balance and it looks like a good fund balance and it's, and it's right in the range that you talked about. But we're still in the situation where we've got the enhancement millage from Wayne Reese. And I know ever since we started getting that, that's what kind of gave us a little bump up in our Correct. fund balance years ago. Right, because we took the money in one year the and we year. actually spent it the next year. So that right. seven million is a buffer that we have in our fund balance. Correct. So as long as we keep having that enhancement millage, these numbers can look good. But Correct. if that enhancement millage goes away, our fund balance is going to drop significantly than the year after that when we Correct. use that last year's funds. So just for everyone to keep that one in mind, that right now we might look good, but if that money goes away, 
um, we're going to be falling down uh, at least a few percent. Right. We Thanks. We're back to twelve percent. Close to twelve percent. And recognize that we try not to put too much into the enhancement fund millage on operational costs. It's more of a supplemental to enhance the program. And I give credit, to Dr. Blanco. You know, people pressure him all the time to spend that money, but we don't do that, knowing that there could be a funding gap later in that process. Right. It's a fiduciary reason that we can't always assume that that money will be there. Yeah, so right. we don't want to have it committed to something that we have to sustain. Yes. For yeah, a long and they might look a lot of money, but that's maybe two to three months worth of operational costs in our district. So, you know, if we actually have a big gap where the state doesn't give us our money for a state aid, that's going to go really quickly. So looking, this is just a, a greater, greater breakdown of the student counts, showing you the top is where we're currently funded at, at 20580 with the super blend. The next column down shows you if we were actually using our normal blend, it'd be 20,400 20, students that's shaded in gray, showing a $1.4 million loss that we would have seen. And in the bottom, just showing the net effect of where we would be it was a regular count for next year with the super blend gone and the additional 500 student student loss. Uh, this shows you just some of the assumptions that we have right now. At the top left in the red parentheses, we're at $8,842 per student. Um, so looking at the most likely columns is what we based our budget upon. Sometimes we would actually be in the last column when we actually know where they're headed, but Unfortunately, with the current state, we don't know that, so we go with our most likely scenario. So $80 is what we're going to increase by. And with the 505 student loss, you see where we actually lose $4.5 million on that with the student loss. The bottom just shows you our cost for the increase in the contract for each one as we look at the $80 increase, which is a 0.9% increase for our staffing cost. All these numbers carry forward to that main screen showing all the assumptions on one page. And this, or this is, I just spent a little time on this one. So with the pandemic, a lot of federal money came our way. So on the top half is showing what we received in 2021. That we have our ESSER funds of 8.4 million, our ESSER's equity fund, which is 1.5 million, was mainly dealing with special ed. We have gear funds that the state gave us of 2.2 million, uh, Corona's virus relief funds, those are the ones we first received back in May, which was very important to get us through that whole time we were shut down, paying staff that was still, the state wanted us to pay staff to continue, hence why we saw the increases in our total uh, sales tax and income tax, because people were still getting money in, so they were still buying things. And Coronas Revith, that's what we use for a lot of the supplies for our PPE supplies. And so that's what we got in 2021, and we're going to spend most of that in 2021. A little bit will carry forward because we have through December to use it. And anytime you do a budget, you try to stay on your budget, so you always have money left over that will carry forward. And in 21-23, we're receiving ESSER 2 funds and ESSER 3 funds. Now, ESSER 2 funds, we've only received Phase 1. And between a state grant and this is how we're paying for the summer school this summer, that will use up the entire funding. And then ESSER 2 will have for continuing next year for some of the things that we have moved into the top part that's going to carry forward for staffing costs in 22-23 or 21-22. Yes. Um, and you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong here. I heard a report that the our state fell behind in spending, I'm assuming it's some of the ESSER funds, that they had a deadline. They had to get it released to us. Right. They didn't fall the behind. A. They chose to tie a lot of the language well, they, they to didn't reduction get it in governor's approved. power. Right. So, yes. And a lot of districts were saying, hey, we borrowed our own money in anticipation that we were going to get this money, and now you guys have de kind of defaulted in releasing that money kind Correct. of thing. They're claiming it's okay, we're not giving the money back to the feds, and you're going to get it at some point. Are we in that position with yes, any of this? because we can't wait for the for, release right. of funds, so we're going to use part of our fund balance. Again, it's a cash flow for these very type of reasons to be able to make sure our program doesn't get hampered. 
because right now we're buying a lot of supplies for next school. Well, I that's what I and the, was uh, worried with the supplies, about. You have a lot more longer lead time than we've had in the past, so we're starting to buy that stuff now for next year, and using our own general fund money to, as a cash flow purpose. Because all this ESSER fund, you can charge back as far as March of twenty. So we don't. My my concern is, can we trust what's being said? I, I think the risk is good because the money, the state has the money. They just haven't released it to us. And until they do it, we can't actually draw upon it. How long can they play this game? For ESSER 2 funds, there was no restriction. But for ESSER 3 funds, there is a date. I'm not sure what that final date was because it was going back and forth. But ESSER 3 funds, they have to give it by a certain date. Otherwise, they lose. we lose the funds at state level, which would be a catastrophic for a lot of districts. Well, I was going to say, and then what happens? Yeah, yes. are we are we left holding the bag, so to speak? We have not gone that far down okay. the rabbit hole, but All some right. districts have. But we've had enough fund balance, and we'll be able to right. make sure we're being careful. Let's continue to be careful. Yes. <laughs> My faith in this is not real uh, <laughs> secure. So ESSER 3 funds, we're getting a total of $86 million for ESSER 3 funds, and that will be for 21-22 and for 22-23. Now, obviously, we have not budgeted that because we're not even at that point yet. Right. But we know that going forward that our philosophy in the district is always find the most restricted funds first and then go backwards because our general funds are the less restricted. So we make sure we spend ESSER 3 as much as we can Use so we'll give general fund yeah. pressure. Knowing that after 22-23, there's going to be a large funding gap as this federal money comes away, we're being careful to make sure that we have the capability to absorb that back in the general fund so we're doing one-time purchases, which you've seen in some of the other from ESSER 1 funds, uh, you know, some vehicles, some buses, you know, some equipment, those type of things. And we're putting some money away in our capital project funds so, so we can start some of our infrastructure projects. So when that, when actually 22, 23 expires, we know that that money will be used in back for the operational purposes that we've spent in the restricted funds. Now, this is the state or the federal government allows us to do that as long as it meets the 15 criteria established. Usually you can't supplement and supplant money from one, the other, like Title I. We can't take push money to the general fund and then take it back later. You can't do that with federal right. funds, but with ESSER funds, they gave us the flexibility to do that. So we can use this for like our HVAC? For mm -hmm. air handling and air type handling of things. It has to be that 15 yeah, criteria. That's in now you can't build a new building with it, but so but we have we to be could, strategic in yeah. how we spend it. And we okay. spend a lot of time working on that to make sure we're being appropriate and you know, you know, efficient with our money. Uh, and these are some just the significant changes going forward. I won't read them all, but just know that we've talked a lot about this already, but just out there for the public to look at. But the key issues going forward, we have to watch, obviously, for the finalization of the school aid fund. Now, they've talked about since it's very robust right now and, you know, anywhere from $1.8 to $2 billion that all the half, half, half or haggling has kind of gone away and they're going to move forward quicker. They even talked by the end of June. But, you know, again, we probably won't have the final numbers because it's less to go through the approval process. So we'll probably adopt a budget very close to this, knowing that in the future, at some time, we'll know we'll have more money to work with. Uh, continue to monitor out and close out the year, um, expecting to be back to a traditional program. Now, a lot of our staffing, we have been overstaffed this year. So as we go forward, we have to be cognizant of that, that after 2023, that we're back to our normal staffing models going forward. But right now, we over, are overstaffed because we, we're very lenient in how we did our virtual program this year and the traditional programs. We are carrying a lot more staff than we normally would have, but that's okay. There's a lot of things people can do. And we might have lower class sizes for the next couple of years, which is good for kids because of the learning loss. So I think overall we're doing good on that, knowing that we're watching ourselves that after a couple of years, we got to get back to our normal cycle of how we staff for everybody. And again, our infrastructure, that can't wait. So as we'll continue to hear about, you know, our long-term infrastructure plan as we go forward, about maybe getting community involved now sooner than later so that thing doesn't go away because that in a process in itself takes a year to year and a half to get, to get through that process. So that's something that also will continue. Rusty Watts. Last time the ESSER, I think ESSER 2 funds, 43% of those have already been allocated. Is Correct. that the same or has, the, has that yep, changed? Yeah, 43% still has only been allocated and between the state grant of roughly about $9 million 
And that 43 million, well, most of that will go towards using the summer school program that we're going to run because it's more than we normally have done. And then some smaller projects after that. And then remind me for ESSER 3, is that going to be earmarked for a very specific or is that more lenient and open? They, they gave us 12 remember. uses like mental health, you know, reduction of staff, those kind of things are in there for ver uh, technology. And that was what the first one for ESSER 12 or ESSER 2 was. ESSER 3 gave us 15 items. That's where the infrastructure of ear handling was added to it, things like that. Okay, thank you. But not capital projects, right? I'm sorry? Not capital projects. like Only as it deals to ear handling. So you can do, ear handling includes doors, windows, air conditioning, uh, HVAC type things. But we can't like pave roads or parking lots or add new buildings. It's very specific to that. Now, however, we're being very strategic and moving some of our operations. So we're taking, saving some of our general fund money, putting in capital projects to do some other things. Correct. Any additional questions for Mr. Wall? That wasn't too bad. That was quick. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We appreciate okay. it. Well, we just got to make sure there's no other comments. So normally we'll just open up briefly to see if there's any comments from the audience on the, on the budget. Thank you, safe. I don't see any. Okay. Now we're done. <laughs> Thank you. Next item. Board of Education Business Acknowledgement of Correspondence. I think the board received various emails about some of the agenda and non-agenda items that we were talking about today. Anything else? Next. Next item is board member committee and organization reports. Do we have any subcommittees meet since we were last together? The superintendent evaluation, do we report on that? Or? Did we report? We yeah. did not. Right. Go for it. So um, the entire board met in closed session for the superintendent evaluation, and we're happy to report that Dr. Glenn Maleko received a highly effective rating. So congratulations, Dr. Maleko, and a press release will follow. Thank you. Appreciate it. If I could just say I appreciate the support of the board, and thank you for leading the process, Trustee Mozip. I find it very valuable to have the, that meeting where I get feedback, and our team is already working on it, and I want to thank our great team you know, it includes our executives who are here, um, but it's it's the entire staff. It's, you know, the teachers that we talked about. It's everyone together. So I want to thank the board for their support. Appreciate it. Next item. A board member superintendent commentary. One brief thing that I will say is that this is the last board meeting before the end of the school year, for, for our students at least. So to all of our graduates, we've already had two graduation ceremonies. We've got four more to go. Congratulations to all the graduates, and, and we look forward to seeing these graduating classes together for kind of the first time this year, finally. Any other comments? President Thorpe. Trustee Moza. Yeah, I, I would also like to uh, congratulate the graduates and their families on accomplishing uh, major milestones in their lives. It is time to celebrate and acknowledge the students and family achievements d despite the tough circumstances that we've had this year. However, while this observation, uh, while this celebration is uh, deserved, it should not be at the expense of others. Our city had some horrific auto accidents in the last month, more than any other month of the year. And most of these accidents occur due to high speeding, distracted driving, and some were serious and resulted in death and permanent disabilities. I ask of our students to always remind themselves, their peers, of the severe consequences of drag racing and what could be the enjoyment and excitement for one or two minutes could result in a misery and sadness for the rest of their lives. I beg families to always have these difficult yet needed discussions with their teens when they start driving. I also ask parents to always remind their children of safe driving and consequences of distracted driving. A um, message or a, a video that you need to watch while driving can wait. Your life is more important and that you mean so much to everyone around you. Um, I also want to mention that Municipal elections uh, are upon us and they're happening in less than two months. 
August 3rd is the primary, and there will be also uh, two um, two things on the ballot, I believe. One is for to, to review the Charter Commission for the city, and the other one is for the library um, renewal uh, millage. Uh, you may request your absentee ballot from the city clerk as early as uh, later this month. So I encourage everybody to exercise the right to vote. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments? Trustee McWatts? I just wanted to follow up and say that as schools are starting to come out and, and let out, we're going to see more children in the in the streets and riding their bikes. And I know what Trustee Mosip was saying that, you know, many times in the neighborhoods we see some young drivers blowing through stop signs. So I say be mindful and conscious that sometimes you're going to have kids on bikes and they may not stop at stop signs. And hopefully they do because I've noticed a lot of cars that don't stop. So please be mindful of that so that we have a safe summer. Um, a joyful summer, and I just want to thank all the parents out there and the teachers and the support staff and everybody who's had quite a memorable year. But I just want to thank everybody, and um, congratulations to all the graduates for their, um, their last year. Thank you. Next. Request for information and or for future agenda items. Dr. Maleko. I just wanted to make a comment that we have all the requests, even from last month, are up to date. They're in the document. So if you get a chance, take a look at information that was several Thank people you. requested. Thank you. Any requests for information or agenda items? I would like to request um, item on student discipline since the police was here today and there was a mention of the student to a prison pipeline or school to prison pipeline to uh, just to see how many cases of our students discipline end up with the police and if there are any cases where they are penalized um, just to see an overview from our high schools I would say. I would add an additional item and, and going to turn the request for information, not from you, but from us. Uh, we talked about what we would like to see and possibly would not want to see in any agreement with the police. Please forward that over. Uh, I'd say let's forward it to Dr. Maleko. Things that we would want to see in any agreement, things that we would not like to see in any agreement so we can start compiling it so we can make sure that it's uh, a document that we can uh, be willing to, to your support of. Any other requests for information or future agenda items? All right, seeing none, next item. Next item is future meeting dates, Monday, June 14th, 2021, HFC meeting, 7 p.m. It will be here, right? At the Frank Franchi boardroom and virtually available, hfcc.edu slash board dash meeting dash schedule on Monday, June 21st. 2021 P to 12 Board of Education meeting 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Franchi boardroom and virtually available via the YouTube channel for the district as well as the Facebook page and cable uh, channel Comcast Dearborn Channel 19 and WOW Channel 15 Monday July 26th 2021 P to 12 Board of Education meeting 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Franchi boardroom and virtually available for viewing on the YouTube channel for the district as well as the Facebook page and cable channel Comcast channel 19 and WOW channel 15. To all of our students and staff, we hope you enjoy your summer. Meeting is adjourned.